Hi everybody. Okay, so these are my two my two cents for um, what's going on right now. I feel the sci the human sciences of sociology, uh, anthropology, psychology um, need to make it back into the intelligence of government and institutions. I mean, our politicians and our leaders need to be educated. Um, for the making of law and civil order uh, re-educated about the human nature basically what the species what our mind is really like how we function naturally because it seems that we have been increasingly in america um, distancing ourselves from the the natural under the, 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 the understanding of the natural species that is the human being I'll explain what I mean by this. I mean, we can see it in a lot of areas, um, but since we're talking about only this right now, if the human species, if people were left, um, we can see it actually. We can travel in certain places of the world and we see it happen. Our base stable starting point, our base plane, our, our our majority um, arrival sort of uh, social plat uh, platform, meaning natural uh, social platform of behavior, is one in which uh, we seek and we uh, establish copacetic uh, harmony. We argue, maybe, we dispute, we fight, but the level, the, the, the average um, the average flow of a, a social situation is one of peace, actually. It, war and uh, murder and violence, and these things are extraordinary. They're not something that comes with a package that occurs given whatever social, natural, social situation we create. They will come as a result of problems that uh, that start afflicting this natural uh, starting base that I'm trying to describe. So what has happened? This has this has always sort of been uh, the world we've known, and, and as as we've gotten more agitated and more complicated and more demand uh, and and life has become more demanding upon the lives of people, and ideologies has have started penetrating. Uh, how we think we should order uh, civil understanding or, or sociological understanding and even physiology. We've started penetrating physiology with ideologies and decided things like uh, gender can be something, that, uh, an idea. You know, that, that we, uh, we took homosexuality out of the um, natural proportional um, uh, interior uh, space it occupied in human sexuality and we extruded it and put it out and said we make it another category and so we've been tinkering in all sorts of ways and um, I'm having this argument right now with people uh, about the George Floyd incident and what I notice is you know because I, I'm, I'm making a point that is explaining that at, with material that um, is out there, I've read stuff that a lot of people are reading. It's not something that I've just put together, uh, pulled out of my pocket. You know, it's uh, it is being talked about. It it is known. It hasn't reached our our uh, strata of leadership of people that can actually make change and and the ones that are re really at the cockpit of 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 situations seem to be the ones that uh, to whom least um, uh, vanguard knowledge arrives at tragically but um, it is known that in the 70s we've uh, sort of uh, the Nixon era, era and I forgot the names of all these people that I read about that brought about change a war on drugs and we've adopted a, a, a militant sort of a, a tough um, uh, hardball kind of um, and, and then moralistic also, just a really severe uh, enforcement of militant, uh, a, a militant attempt to fix the problem. But instead of fixing it through understanding, 
uh, the sociological, the social conditions and forces, the complex arena of, of the way our children were growing up that were allowing for uh, behavior and vices to take hold in culture. And we didn't look at any of this in any intelligent way of understanding the dynamics that were allowing for things to become so viceful and corrupt, but we just decided to go after it as if it were uh, targets at war, and so we, and with intense punishment, and we started uh, oversimplifying moralistic punishment with ideas such as uh, more years, uh, the more the crime represents, uh, uh, you know, a, a transgression, and, and, and nothing there. We had we've we've carried forward without any sophistication. And in, in, in how to how to heal the problem, we just simply started tightening and being more punishing, and and so our prison population went up, and we just started being uh, more indiscriminate. And the protocol, I mean, you can even see it in analogies such as uh, an overproduction of military hardware. They didn't know what to do with it, and so they they gave it to the police. And this tells you the mentality that we've had against our own people through government and through in police institution and through the judicial system even uh, resulting in this brutal way in which now for example you see it you can actually see it you, if, if it's happened to you walking in, in one of the downtown uh, streets of our cities and police all of a sudden apprehend a group of people you see that they're jolted like they were just being brats or or just you know uh, whatever and you know they're always shocked by the 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 way that the police marches in a squad forward as if they were uh, attacking a village in Syria or something it's it's so unreal you know we've all seen this and whoa what happened oh it's a good thing my battery has my computer has kept anyways kept recording um and uh we've all seen this and we've sadly gotten accustomed to it we our movies humor this we no longer and and then uh we have like what uh, cases that are happening and we just gloss over them because we don't realize what we have done we don't realize how we got there and so people who try to argue against me and say well, I made a simple point of saying, well, you know, don't shoot until you're shot at. Um, which to me, you know, people see this as, as so, something like a, like a, like a, a board game of, of logic. And you, you can't turn a society and a people's lives and the life of a people into a board game. Uh, we are human beings that, that have other... Um, um, that have natural uh, sort of uh, how can I say this if, you, if we were to describe we were to describe the natural behavior of of of, hum, of the species of human beings throughout uh, one of uh, throughout a day throughout our days for example it wouldn't be a description that requires reaction to somebody's action it is understanding the human mind. It is understanding that by default, no matter how bad uh, uh, um, um, a neighborhood is in one of our cities, the over, you can still affirm that the overall default of that people is not to be looking for a police to shoot, a police officer to shoot. Uh, it is not a war zone. You could say that at a war zone, you have to assume that the other soldier must kill the uh, the enemy soldier and so the the understanding the protocol the way of engagement is particular to that condition what we've done in america is we've taken that mentality and brought it over to the to to the people's home to the the the, the life of people to the to the the the, 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 the you know the walking on our street, the walking our dogs, the children going to school, the, we brought that, it's unbelievable. But that's what some people felt they needed to do when it was time to get tough on drugs. And so, as a result, we've become thinking, we've, 
we've become that kind of thinking. You see people uh, if, say things like that. If the police officer doesn't shoot first, he's risking getting shot. To him, it makes sense because he doesn't know uh, this guy that was recently shot at a Walgreen because he crouched down. Um, you know, like the guy in Las Vegas who was pleading, please don't kill him, don't shoot him. Where is the mind of this police officer that he can no longer understand? No worries, that is a guy who really is panicked. He's not a threat. He can't even put down his weapon and walk up to him. Tell his buddy, walk with me so we can arrest this guy. He didn't need the weaponry. He didn't need the protocol, but they can't, they can no longer see that because we have forced this mentality through training and we have forced officers to overcome their misgivings because they're not stupid. They know that they're in a, not at a war zone. They know that they're just dealing with regular people, that those teenagers are, you know, they could be bad and they may have tried to wield a gun once, but that is not the average description of the social environment. They, intuitively, we never lose sight of, of understanding the social environment we are part of. And so they had to force these officers to adapt these warlike protocols. And so as a result, you, you get what you're seeing happen on the streets. These, they, are, uh, they have to do this. And, and now it's become like this machine that they have to maintain all this structure and protocol and training so that their jobs can continue, so that the whole institution and their workplace and the whole structure of, of the, the, the whole world, of it's all like one mass, right? The judicial and the police, and it's all like they're, they're almost like uh, a, different, a different class, a different country within a country. It's, it's really intense. They have like something they need to agree on because it is too overwhelmingly countercurrent, uh, contra natura, everything that they're doing, everything, the, the brutal uh, uh, judgment and sentencing of people so unarticulating, understand, like, it's all of it. For example, the, the very notion that you can be, somebody can accuse you as a lie to try to hurt you, people are a little crazy, they do this, uh, Family members will tr try to hurt another family member and they will lie. And so all of a sudden you're brought before the, uh, 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 to the court based on a false accusation, which happens all the time by the thousands of in uh, instances, thousands, <laughs> millions of instances, accusations that are exaggerated or false. Nonetheless, before that situation of a possible false accusation, one of the lawyers takes a side and decides, my job is to prove that person guilty. And the other lawyer, who's probably a defense lawyer, already starting on a weaker platform, uh, is, 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 his job is to prove that, that it's a false accusation, that you, that person is not guilty. Now, what happens? If you take, if you do the, if you run the math, you, I mean, you feel this without even doing the math and doing the statistical calculations. You feel this when you go to court. All of a sudden, your life has been split in half and you have a 50% chance of being thrown to the sharks because of the prowess of the professionalism in that institution. The professionalism of the institution is now in charge of turning your life into a 50-50 chance. While you are coming from an organic situation where two-thirds or whatever probability is an exaggeration, a, a one-fifth is possibly a, a false accusation, a lie, one-fifth is probably worse. <laughs> and uh, you did something a lot worse than what you're being accused for and nobody knows it. And so it's all organic. It has no, it reflects. You're thrown into a situation from the real world, and so all of these inhuman uh, mechanical constructions and the whole military 
mentality of, of, of dealing with the, you know, instead of just going after the drugs, wherever they are, and getting rid of the drugs, and understanding that people have issues, psychological self-esteem problems, they were wrongly educated by a culture that glorifies drugs, and instead of understanding society and just taking away the drugs from them, we have this mentality that we have to go look for who to punish. And, and, and you know, it's, it's, so the whole thing goes against that natural sense that we all have that people are just trying to be human beings. Nobody's born, uh, you know, uh, sorted out to be the killer as opposed to those who are sorted out to be the good guys. We all know this and we're all trust to, you know, we all understand that every human being is the same. Ideas are brought to our, our developing reasoning mind. Babies uh, look at another colored baby, race-colored race baby, and they first think human being. They're not thinking a black or a Latino or an Asian. We are the ones that mess ourselves up. We also know this. <laughs> we also know this. We've been talking about it. But like I say, our higher notions of intelligence don't make it to the cockpit. They don't make it to the to those that are actually uh, laying out uh, how to how to go about civilization. And so, uh, when it comes to racism, something as simple as just under getting across to all people that it really doesn't affect the understanding or the logic of human behavior. Um, and and any kind of uh, thing that has to do with moral values of behavior, uh, what race you are, you can still argue you were wrong in stealing that, you were right in, in stealing that, or you, uh, it's understandable that you thought it belonged to you, or you did not need to uh, be so uh, violent in, in defending yourself, you, you could have just pushed that person away and walked away, or whatever circumstance of human behavior needs to be uh, talked about requires no reference whatsoever to our race. And so when we, in a newscast, say 10 black teenagers, blah, 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 even though the newscast seems to try to show how we once again are being unfair in society, uh, and doing this to black people, what we're actually doing is all the people that are listening to that new newscast are actually continuing to be fed the idea that it is a world in which of, of, of a hierarchical uh, racial organization of blacks and Asians and whites. And, and, and so that it almost like ties us ties us to the problem, and once we've categorized uh, human beings which are naturally not categorized, we're not categorized by anything. We're not categorized by race, uh, sexuality, there's only one human sexuality, and it, uh, homosexuality can happen to uh, human sexuality, but none of us are categorized by as any races or even the only category perhaps that starts becoming close to the natural organic form of the human being is is the national the cultural nationality the people the language that you know uh, if you're Cuban you're Spanish but then if you're if you speak Spanish you're uh, probably very close to all the other because of language all the other Hispa Hispanic countries and and so you could say that language and countries start but really I mean, that's, even that you can still avoid when talking about anything that has to do with uh, human behavior or, or dynamics of morality or, or, or explaining and judging uh, the, 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 you know, the reasons for something that unfolded. Uh, you know, you never, you don't need to do these things. So, but what happens is that because we, we continue to perpetuate in our language, in the way that we talk about society, through the, these nouns, we later 
finding ourselves with these nouns that need to be applied to to human beings, we must explain them. We must explain what they're about. So what is a black? What is a white? What is an Asian? What is a gay? What is a, you know, and, and we create and we uh, make uh, race, what we call racism, uh, perpetuate and, and surge over again to the next generation. It's really that simple. Uh, and we know it. And we know it, but nobody, nobody is able to, in any of our institutions that educate and lead our nation in different areas of, of, of wherever, you know, that uh, the people look at, <laughs> look to for, for guidance, can, can bring the vanguard of higher knowledge, which usually is simpler and organic, uh, to the knowledge of, of and, and to the making of our, of our societies and our, and our, and our countries. And, and that's, you know, we have all this higher intelligence being dragged around the masses and we can, we, you know, we find a president that uh, perpetuates a situation, like somebody also uh, shared some of the people that are, they think that they're arguing against me, whatever, that are opposing, they, um, they, they posted something to the effect, oh yeah, the, the, when, the, when, when there was that huge shooting spree of police officers, that uh, woman police officer was killed, I think it was maybe Chicago or Texas, I don't remember. Um, and so he was trying to make a counter argument, like, see how violent people can be against police? That's why we need to be just as violent, if, if not more. We need to quash it. We need to block it. And I'm like thinking to myself, they, how can they not see that that anger is because of the the frustration and the anger that you feel that in your own country you're you're treated and bullied about like you were at, uh, you know being uh, pushed around by an enemy soldier in your own country <laughs> and and there's this hate and then there's this resentment there's this trauma festering in the whole population since for decades and we live with it and we ignore it and we just laugh through it and we humor it but it's there. There's people who are not so superficial and lackadaisical about about living, about life, and who don't have it so easy. Who are trying, who are more mature and are fighting through uh, those other neighborhoods of, of of our cities where they have their you know life is rough and they're really trying to grow up and and, and get somewhere and 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 they're uh, you know uh, they are more in touch with these real forces underneath these real uh, frustrations and traumas that are being that our entire society are being afflicted with but um and of course people who can escape it don't suffer it as much until until they become a victim of it until they themselves get dragged down and then all of a sudden they're in the record they have a, you know, and then all of a sudden they, they were caught driving without a license and then they were, uh, somebody had an open container in their car and before you know it they spent, you know, 15 days in jail and then all of a sudden they start understanding what has motivated them to be dragged and snagged into the, into what so many others are suffering every single day. But normally that person would have escaped it because they live in other kind of reality in our country. But there are even in those, that other more privileged area, there are those cases that get snagged into what millions are suffering every single day. Just They walk out into the street and the first thing they think is, I'm being looked at by cops because I'm black. And that's their day, after day, after day. If I was African American, I was telling my friend the other day, I would have left America. How could I could I? You know, today we have airplanes, and maybe uh, maybe it, it, Africa would be too difficult. But you know, you could go to a place like Jamaica, or you could go to some places, even some places in the, that are much gentler and much more welcoming of, of of the African race. Perhaps Australia. You know, 
I would not stay in America a single day because you can feel it. You can feel this, this hate that they feel towards everybody. Everybody is suspect. Everybody is the enemy. And so you empowered, you gave everybody uh, 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 the, the kit of uh, as assigned categories. And so they take all that frustration that they feel in their jobs for you know, forced to enact war-like protocol against their own people. And they have all that psychological stress happening and there are the categories to do something with them and so you know if you're our african-american in the states you feel that you like you must <laughs> i'm saying it like i would know but you must feel like it you must feel it you must feel it it must be horrible i mean we people who who are not african-american should empathize not just with the the um not just with the uh, the the individual incidents and and but really be humanly put ourselves in 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 the true empathy of living that person's life and maybe you don't know it but a lot of Americans who are not African Americans know what the police are like and they can very they could very easily empathetically put their selves in their feet in their shoes and know what it must be like to you know to go out with with a group of friends maybe you you went to you moved to a to um uh another neighborhood and you have a your first batch of friends who are all mixed race and and you're thinking life is wonderful and it's no longer about being black or white but this high school is great and you feel like you're starting to come out of this and then all of a sudden you get pulled over or when you're walking uh, you're leaving Universal Studios or something with your friends and you f notice I mean the police will try to not show it but you feel it if you're African-American you feel how when it comes to you there there is something changes in them something is uh, now that goes without saying uh, you know we already know this it must be ter it must be a, a terrible thing and, you know if, if I was Latino if I was Latino in the sense of you know came from South America from um, from Central America or Mexico and I I, I really looked you know native uh, like I had a lot of native blood in me uh, and I was easily identified as Latino by American standards. Also, I wouldn't want to live in the United States. People treat you like you are, and, and it's, it's the worst part is that we hide it. We don't, we act like it's, everything is good and dandy, like it's a, a reception where everybody's welcome. Um, and then we humor it, uh, when we feel we overcome it, we, we talk about it as if it was something that we can make a cultural element of. Like, um, like we like things that are black or we like things that are Mexican, you know. And we just never let go of this. Always creating the category. It's always, always... So if it's not positive, it's negative. And then when you run into the police, they, you, 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 you're reminded that as far as the police is concerned, it's always a matter of fear. You know, if you are a British person who came to that same high school um, and was hanging out that day with all those friends from Universal Studios and you were stopped by the police, I can assure you, and I've seen this with my own eyes, you know, there's like, that person is relaxed. Oh, they're never going to touch me. They're never, oh, because I'm British, you know, because I look different. Some countries, this doesn't happen. In some countries, in many countries, I don't know if most countries, or uh, I, I can't give you a proportion, but this is particular. This is a particular condition of, of cultural personality that we have in our country. In a lot of countries, it's never something that anybody thinks about. 
you know, oh, they're going to think of me. They're, i got to worry because they're going to see me as Latino. Oh, I can relax because I obviously look British or Irish or something. You know, this is a situation that would not happen. Everybody would feel like they're in trouble equally. They were, they're just in trouble because the police decided to check their IDs. And that would be the, the, the shared feeling among that group of kids. But that doesn't happen in our country. Now, obviously, this is what we're talking about. This is what everybody's talking about now. Again, why does it never go away? We don't let it go away. We have, we talk about it. And when we talk about it, we don't talk about the, 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 the problem of, of human cognizance and how we relate to other, at a, others at a more, um, how can I say this, a more anthropological or more uh, sociological discourse of why it is easy to remember people by what they look like or sometimes we want to talk about something that's very agitated and uh, agitating our emotions and we we want to get through that explanation or that and so we refer to people's appearances and 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 when it's um when it's about uh, when we're offended and we do that um we hurt hurt, hurt people uh, when we're, you know, it's okay if everybody is having a good time and we laugh about how we look differently in our races um, and everybody thinks it's a positive, fun thing. But then if people are offended and angry, we say it charged with hate or resentment or vengeance and it is delivered and received by that person who later also has a hard time interpreting the human charge uh, of, of that statement and they also subconsciously think oh it's because I look Asian or because I am Jewish or because I look black that that evokes hate frustration or vengeance and so it's you know we could talk about how racism occurs in some context, so, social context and, uh, and, and leave, leave the necessity to grab onto it like a scaffolding to, exp to get through the discourse. Because as we're grabbing onto that scaffolding and, and continuing to talk about Black Lives Matter or uh, uh, action, um, Pro, uh, pro action or what was it called proactive laws and you know we did the we made this mistake when we started busing in california and we don't realize that it's it's so silly in, in the states we have not been able to solve this because we continue to try to solve it using the language of discrimination it's almost like we we can't get rid of it. It's like a dog chewing its own tail. Because we don't know how to speak as a society, as, as a cultural personality, about people and all Americans. And yeah, among us Americans, you know, you find all these things, all these different nuances that come from these different areas. And, but they're not necessarily obligated to stay according to the race in, in that cultural area. That's something that we do because we keep associating the skin color to that cultural activity or cultural area. We don't know how to just talk about people and forget about what race you are. And, and so we have been sort of teasing with under, kind of, that's why the term African-American came up. It was uh, was you know there was a push. Some people started seeing this, but it never quite reached. So what we have is that some other people, like the police, <laughs> the police will just are very you know in this protective cocoon that the judicial and the police, the lawyers have a separate thing. You know they don't. But when at the station, um, you know the language that is used there. Uh, really makes you see how why they can't get rid of it. You know they'll say derogatory nouns about 
about the different races and they have they they feel that they are entitled to mistreat people i remember the first one of the first times i ever went to a a, a police station or spent the night or something there was a a sign that they wrote saying rats taped to the glass so that the peop the person in the holding cell would see it so that they had they were having fun the little jokey jokes with each other at how they can insult you know this this whole underworld that really happens at the police station and is, is something nobody talks about nobody uh thousands of people could thousands of people who have been to prison and seen what how they, all of a sudden wouldn't you know <laughs> they're like dr jekyll and mr hyde they all seem passive and controlled and you know when they once they get in there they kind of start swinging their 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 shoulders and they get sassy and they they insult you by what you look like <laughs> wow where did that come from right well, the the way of talking about people also is uh, perpetuated there. And so it is impossible if people who try are making the effort to try to make one cultural notion of people by changing black to African-American and other things that people have tried to, although the, the notion has never been clear enough and, and we're always bringing the noun back in and so every time you repeat the noun doom, you instantly condition whatever kid who whoever's listening to that to okay i gotta work with these i gotta work with these groups i gotta work with these groups that's america i gotta work you know with a mechanical construction of the of the so we have to get rid of that and just be a people <laughs> and everything that has to do with ethnicities and 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 racial appearance has to not matter to anybody any group i shouldn't have to say the word group <laughs> you, see, you get my point uh, to anybody in the country it shouldn't be a, what we're like talking about our races and that's what's what we need to aim for but people get that but it's almost impossible when you have such a strong authority uh, per, uh uh, propagating these old because they're old ways they're old racist south south kind of you know ra ways of of of, of, um, of pigeonholing ca categories in a country of uh, you know whatever irish or poor people or you know black people or latinos or mexicans or whatever you know this um has always been with humanity and so they kind of are uh, institutions such as the police and perhaps other institutions too that uh, groups uh, in, in society perhaps are, have a uh, don't let it go they're like the anchor that that we that don't let us they don't let us pull the anchor off the bottom in other words because they are in going against the natural flow of, of organic society so strongly in punishing and they're not caring about understanding what's happening to society and why these problems are so tough no everybody's scared of talking about maybe the presence of guns is is a big problem and we need to really seriously look at perhaps we should consider a, a more progressive scandinavian kind of mentality where uh we need not fear needing to have guns yeah we fear needing to we need to have guns because we fear because now if, if we were to move in that progressive direction it would mean that the police would also have to be included as long as we continue to believe that we have to force society to behave a certain way through through uh, getting tough we continue to wedge that separation we need to apply them in, uh, a progressive social mentality also to our police if we're going to relax um you know in in uh in the country as far as the pr the the the, the, uh, the presence of so many weapons in, in our society but so 
what I wanted to conclude with is that even though the police seem to be the anchor that is we, that won't let us move, continue to move the po the boat forward, uh, and, and what some of us are, are understanding is really the, the the deeper, broader way of overcoming these divisions in society, these racial divisions in society. Um, it's hard to just because you can't instruct it. The minute you say don't don't treat people through by their uh, by their races, the other person says by their what? But you're doing it. You're saying don't treat them by their races. That means there are races. So it's very tricky as to teach a society overnight to no longer be racist. You can't just do that. You, it's something that gets layered with every year, with every generation, and uh, a way in which your parents are towards people and how your parents and society teach you to make the example of, with their own way of speaking about the world. <laughs> and it, it creates a way of, that's what actually liberates us from, from categorizing people. But nonetheless, we could get such a notion um, explained simple enough as a sort of a, an avant-garde kind of cultural movement, just like we're famous for making in, <laughs> in the world, that actually nails this notion, this sort of uh, dog chasing its tail notion. Somehow, we could be able conceivably to get this idea out there and then people will know oh, okay I get it I, I still think about it but I realize that I have to stop feeding society and culture by talking about it the way I kind of still feel I, I only know how to think about it but I get it that I, I, I need to stop offending people by putting them in categories or putting myself in a category. So if, if we manage to explain that notion simply enough, I think that there's a chance that we don't have to wait for several generations until we finally become a people that never think about what race we are. Okay. So long.